just took it as somebody who's just so focused on winning the approval of other people mm-hmm. that they're they don't know who they are uh-huh. so they're going to be invisible because they're not doing what they want to be they're not who they want to be and they're yeah. not focusing on anything they just yeah. want to be accepted it's, it's like somebody who shows up to work and is like tell me what to do yeah and it's like well i've got a million of these already <laughs> you go stand in line with everybody else that <laughs> yeah. says tell me what to do yeah so yeah it's absolutely that you need to stand up and you need to say here's what i can do put it to work kind mm-hmm. of a thing but at the same time i think that there is a it, it the pendulum can swing the other way. Yeah. And so you just have people that are like failing at life, not adulting properly like we <laughs> talked about last time, but are in their mid thirties or mid forties. And they're just like, no one understands. Yeah. Kind of like the, you know, the musician, nobody understands my art, man. Yeah. And it's like, no, your art sucks. I know. It's and just a milk jug in a glass case. Even the people that you want to understand it still, you're, yeah. you're not listening to the feedback uh-huh. from them. <laughs> you're a jerk. <laughs> Listen to people. They want to like your art, but you suck. By the way, Jim Carrey made fun of that, that artsy weirdness. Uh, in one of his episodes on a show, oh, yeah. he went to this really what hip show in Living Color. Or? No, Jim Carrey. Yeah. Uh, no, not Jim Carrey. Jim Gaffigan. Oh, Jim Gaffigan. Uh, okay. I, we, I'm like I thought, Jim Carrey's got a show. <laughs> no. Tell me where. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jim Gaffigan was trying to stay relevant and be accepted by the younger generation. So mm-hmm. he went to all these like clubs and nightclubs, and then he would talk about his normal stuff, and they didn't get it. And eventually, at the end, he ended up inside of a bathroom talking into a microphone in the mirror. And he was like, okay, avocados. I hate how uh, they're spoiled right when you get them home. And then the shower curtain opens and it's three, just three hipsters listening. Like how just so weird it was. And he's like, this is not my scene. I don't want to be accepted by these people, you know? (laughs) Yeah. So. so if he were to try to be acceptable to those people, mm-hmm. he would be invisible because it's not a f- good fit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I I think of this in business as the the saying the customer is always right. Oh yeah, is crap. Yes, because the wrong customer is never right. <laughs> yes, is rarely ever right. You need to decide as a business owner because if you're just, if the customer is always right, you'll just become whatever everybody demands that you become you'll be just reduced to whoever's the cheapest yeah i'll do it for anybody that asks and i'll just go out there and yeah you know you want me to be an accountant i'll be an accountant you want me to be a gardener i'll be a gardener (laughs) yeah (laughs) just whoever will pay me money i'll do whatever they want yeah you as a business owner have to take the lead and say this is the audience that i want Mm -hmm. and they are the ones that i will listen to Mm. this is not the audience i want i will not listen to them I'm gonna invest. For the most part, I will not listen to them. Right. So, the wrong customer is sometimes right. The right customer is almost always right, mm. but not always either. Because even the right customer can tell you something that's not the best for your business. Right. Um, you as a business owner take that responsibility. So, you know, you might have kids who you might have parents who come and say, "No, you have to be open on Columbus Day and during the summer and Saturdays and Sundays." Right. And, be like, and you have to be, you have to set your guidelines knowing it's going to turn some people off. Right. And it's going to sound appealing to other people. Yeah. And be willing to wait for that audience. Yeah. Which me and Janie talked about having the summers off. And I was just like, I don't know what parents are going to go for that because then they got to find somebody just for two months. Mm-hmm. And then she was just like, well, we, we can do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. And that was funny. She she sounded more like a business owner than me. She was like, "We can do what we want to do." That's tired. I know. <laughs> she's tired of kids now. <laughs> you get you get like six hours every day yeah, during the school year. <laughs> so she should run the during school yes. time, and you run the summertime. There you go. No, I don't. <laughs> and you send her on a vacation for three months <laughs> yeah. out of the year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just that kind of scared me because what if we lose all the kids i have now mm-hmm. you know but i don't know it, mm-hmm. if what if not, they stay i don't you know i can't yeah so you have to decide if the kids you have now or the parents that you have now if that's your target audience mm-hmm. and if it is you listen to them if it's not 
then you don't necessarily say, screw all you guys, I'm out of here, dump them all and go find new kids. But you find a way to phase and bring in new parents that mm-hmm. are that part, part yeah. of that audience. I did slowly phase out the other ones. Yeah, there was somebody um, smart that uh, our daycare we used to go to, um, she only took kids whose parents were teachers. So they always got they summers during, off. They were at home during the summer yeah. kind of thing. And always got all the holidays off. And so yeah, I that's thought that, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. But yeah, I see what you're saying. And I, I, I do see what he's saying too. Like if you want to be acceptable to everybody, you're, mm-hmm. you're going to be invisible. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, do you have more? I know we're coming up on an hour, and we still want to get to our nerd talk. Oh, dang. Okay. (laughs) I do have a lot more. I know. Um, Me too. Maybe we can do this for not next week, but the third week. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know No, you don't want to. (laughs) I I have plenty to talk about, but we talk about... Yeah, we do. We talk about this stuff other times, too. Um, Any one that stands out to you quickly? uh, Yeah. When you know what you're going for he said that sometimes friends and families yeah, that's the one i wanted to talk about <laughs> they can find your clarity confronting yeah and i think that's what gets me frustrated with some people like they're just like i'm doing this batter up and i'm i don't care i'm just doing it i'm mm-hmm. like wow you're so clear in what you want but i get annoyed by it because maybe it's just a reflection on me how i'm not clear, clear. in what i want mm-hmm. so maybe that's why i get frustrated with it and you have things that you're clear on that frustrate other people too. yeah so i mean the, the easiest one for us is when we decided debt wasn't an option how mm-hmm. many of our friends <laughs> They're like fight against that if we were as bold and you know outspoken about that as we used to be yeah um you know people rationalize in their head what's not possible and i think that that's what this this means Mm. is they've already rationalized in their head that it's better to be an accountant or it's better to work for the government or it's better to stay you know have have manageable credit card payments and Mm -hmm. stuff and when somebody lives life contrary to that it it creates cognitive dissonance in their mind and they're just like wait something about my reality is breaking Isn't right because i've already said it's impossible to do this yeah, yeah and here's charlie doing this so if it's impossible for me why is it possible for charlie yeah and if it's possible for charlie does that mean it's actually possible for me and so they're trying to reconcile it huh. in their mind that's a good way to think about it and look at it yeah yeah so, um, but you brought up the good point of other people have things that they're totally clear on that you're not, <laughs> and it frustrates you. Yeah. So maybe we should be more patient yes. with people who get frustrated with yeah. us, knowing that they have things that they're clear on that uh-huh. frustrate us too. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Being patient with people. Yeah. I want everybody to be clear about the things I'm clear about and confused about the things I'm confused about. <laughs> then nobody would help be able to help anybody <laughs> if mm. we're all confused on the same thing. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> and then there'd be no arguing and convincing anyway either because that's, we all know that everything yeah, it's the, the same, same yeah together that's true we all have the same truth that we all hold to uh-huh. so dang it <sighs> all right it's a better world because we're all different that's and true frustrate each other yeah and the last thing that i thought about was he said dreams wealth and fame is not where you find your sense of completion at mm-hmm. which i always think if i just won the lottery you know <laughs> 20 million dollars all my problems would be fine isn't it always famous rich yeah. people yeah who've achieved their dreams yeah. who tell us that and yet and we don't believe them yeah <laughs> well and then they're the ones on tv like sometimes you get to see those famous and rich people and their lives are just miserable wrecked. and sucky yeah. yeah but we still don't believe them we We're don't like, believe oh, it i'll be different i'll be I'm, different when yeah. i'm a millionaire it's gonna be so yeah. different <laughs> oh i won't lend money out to friends or i'll be family. the same person i am today yeah. i swear yep. just give me a chance <laughs> <sighs> yeah that was cool he said what did he he said i wish every one of you could achieve all of the dreams fame and wealth that you want mm. so that you could see that it's not the what most important cra- thing yeah. in the world yeah that was cool Mm. I wish I had all the dreams, wealth, and fame. Me too. I, want to. I just want a shot at it. <laughs> <laughs> just so I could see that the grass was greener back yeah. when I was poor. You know, 
Then I'll go back, I swear. What's that uh, joke? You know you know why the grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> more manure. More manure. More, yeah. more mm-hmm. ass. Yep. All right. Let's get into our nerd talk. All right. Luke Cage, Luke season Cage. one. I, I did not think I'd like this show. Mm-hmm. I didn't like him in Jessica Jones. Okay. And I, I think it was because I just didn't know about him either. But, man, I watched one episode. I was like, oh, I'll give it a try. And mm-hmm. then just three days later, I was finished. Mm-hmm. So I just thought it was awesome. You just keep going one yeah. episode after another. Yeah. Um, so this was different than the other two shows because we already had that intro to him from Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. So we had some kind of expectation. It actually took us like two or three episodes to figure out when this was taking place yeah like is this before he met jessica jones Uh is this after (laughs) yeah because it wasn't clear there at the beginning we're like is this his origin story is this like yeah you know when does this take place yeah we're trying to figure out like where does it take place within the story arc of avengers and the marvel cinematic universe and stuff it's it Correct me if I'm wrong, it happens... This happens after Jessica Jones. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's be- what he finally does kind of reveal. Yeah, because at one point, you know, the the uh, councilwoman says, Did you see that other per- powerful person snap Kilgrave's neck? Yeah. You know? Yeah, there were references to both Daredevil yeah. and Jessica Jones uh-huh. in it. Um, I... And he talked about, you know, he was heartbroken and stuff like that from Jessica, not from... Uh, the other Reeve, girl. Reva. Reva. Yeah, because yeah. Reva was the one that Jessica killed, right? Remember? Did Jessica kill somebody? Yeah, because remember, uh, Luke. Jessica knew that she killed Reva, and she didn't tell Luke, and that's why they didn't talk for a couple episodes. That's right. Man, it's been a long time <laughs> since I watched that one. I've actually Janie watched this with me. Luke Cage. Yeah, and she loved it. Cool. And I want to have her go and watch Daredevil with me, too, because I think she'd enjoy that. You guys are lucky. <laughs> you, a couple other... Uh, Chuck, my friend Chuck, his wife uh-huh. watched uh, Jessica Jones in it because it has uh, uh, who, the Doctor Who guy. Oh, what's his name? Um, the guy that plays Kilgrave. Okay, yeah. It's not Matthew Smith. I'm trying to remember who who the actor is. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. She likes him. Uh-huh. uh-huh. D- and uh, she walk, watched Luke Cage too, but yeah. I can't get Sarah interested in any no, of these. No, not, not no. no. Man, I would have thought I'm maybe. I'm dying inside. <laughs> but she watches other superhero movies with you. Only right? Avengers oh, and yeah. Captain America. Oh, okay. So she hated De- she hated Deadpool, has not yet seen or cared about Batman versus Superman, and doesn't care about Suicide Squad. So the only thing we've and apocalypse she's the only thing she's seen so far is civil war civil war yeah is it because chris evans no it's actually because of uh the guy that plays bucky barnes oh which i understand completely yeah <laughs> i think we've already talked about how jacked he is yeah on this it's like podcast. mr fit mm-hmm. so were there mm-hmm. what <laughs> sweet christmas <no. laughs> sweet christmas um so where where do you rank Luke Cage with Daredevil, Jessica Jones, and in, in this one? I would rank season two of Daredevil first. Oh, okay. Because of the Punisher and because it was just a better show. Mm. Ah, man, the Kingpin was more fully involved in season one. That was good too. Yeah. I'm probably just going to end up ranking these based on the most recent ones. <laughs> yeah. I'd rank season two of Daredevil first. I actually like Jessica Jones better than this one just because of Kilgrave as a bad guy. Yeah. And his ability yeah. and, you know, the whole psychological yeah. stuff that was going on in that. Yeah. Um, and then I'd probably rank this one than Daredevil season one. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I, I'm the same. Daredevil, Jessica Jones, then mm-hmm. Luke Cage. It's going to be the end of March when the next series comes out in The Defenders, and that's going to be Iron Fist. Mm-hmm. And then next summer we're going to get The Defenders, all four of them together, oh, wow. in a TV show. They're going to have one season. And then next November we're going to get The Punisher series. I, I'm looking forward to The Punisher one. Yeah, so we've yeah. got like four months between each of these shows, 
my I'm I have to go back and watch because I'm already yeah. forgetting other yeah. aspects of Jessica Jones and Daredevil. Uh-huh. Um, I do have one hole in this show. Okay, just one. Um, yeah, just the one. Okay. I didn't want to ruin it in my mind. Okay, Luke in Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. Luke Cage is has a bar in Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. Okay, but then at the end of Jessica Jones, he goes to Harlem mm-hmm. and is a sweeper at uh, Pop's barber shop. Mm-hmm. But then he's talking to he talks about Pop's like Pop's like was the neighborhood, you know, dad, and everyone knew him, and he taught him everything. Mm-hmm. Like it didn't make sense. Like is he from Harl? Is Luke Cage from Harlem or is he from Hell's Kitchen? Because if if this was only like at maybe like a year after mm-hmm. uh, Jessica Jones, how how is Luke Cage talking about Pops like he raised him? So, this is my understanding of it. Luke Cage did not grow up in Hell's Kitchen or Harlem. Oh yeah, it was Georgia. He he grew up in Georgia because yeah. he was because so, his dad was the pastor yeah. and that's where his brother came from and everything. But Reva grew up in Harlem. And had that relationship with Pops. Reva, after he got out of prison, he came back to Harlem with Reva. Mm-hmm. And that's when he got to know Pops and everything like that. Okay. And then from there, after Reva died, or because of... During that part, is when he must have moved to Hell's Kitchen and okay. had the bar. And then moves back to Harlem after... Jessica Jones burns down his bar. Okay, is <laughs> kind of what he, had, <laughs> what he had said. So that's kind of how it all plays out. Yeah, I didn't understand Shade's backstory really. Yeah, he was in Seagate with, Lucas. but they didn't really say why or how he got out or anything like that. Um, yeah. One thing my friend Chris pointed out that's a good point. Another hole in it is um, who's the bad guy's name? Cottonmouth. No, no strike. Diamondback. Yeah. Diamondback. So he was already established as a gangster, and he was like the boss that Shades was reporting to mm. on Cottonmouth and everything. But then we find out Diamondback is entirely motivated by his hatred of Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how would you have already been a gangster mob boss in? Harlem before any potential that Luke Cage would have ended up there kind of a thing. Right. So that huh. was that was kind of a hole in that. Yeah. Other than that, um, I liked the switch from Cottonmouth to um, Black Mariah as the yeah. as the main villain. Yeah. I thought it was well timed too because yeah. like we started getting four or five episodes in and I'm like, Cottonmouth is not going to last long as a bad well, guy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I had down. I'm like, he's a lame villain. Yeah, he's not terrorizing. His, super, not- his superpower is uh, fixing his cufflinks and Playing the laughing. piano. <laughs> Playing the piano yeah. and standing in front of pictures of Biggie Smalls. Yeah. So, Which I thought that was an awesome as soon as he, scene. As soon as he lost his money and lost control over his kingdom, it started to fall apart. Yeah, he yeah. can kill henchmen, but who yeah. can't? Yeah. So it wasn't like he was and, losing control of everything. Yeah. I'm like, and, how are you going to hold on to this for eight more episodes yeah, of this and show? He, <laughs> he just seemed so desperate when he told his henchmen to go around Harlem taking money to pay for his debts. Yep. I was like, you're that's so lame. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. People Pe- are hating. Petty criminal, yeah. like not mob boss material. Yeah. So. He fell apart pretty quickly, but then, spoilers, uh, he fell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, the end of Cottonmouth and the rise of Mariah. So uh-huh. I thought she was a good bad guy, though. Yeah, she was. She was very devious. Yeah. Just. And I liked at the beginning how she's all like, it's all for the people, and I want to build the community and everything. It's like, no, it's for you. End, it's, not, it's like, yeah. it's my power. Yeah. <laughs> Did you but, like Striker or uh, Diamondback? was all right um he seemed like a less insane joker to me mm -hmm. like he just wanted to wreak havoc with no real reason (laughs) so we've had five deadpool civil war apocalypse luke cage suicide squad batman versus superman six movies slash tv shows this year this makes now the third out of six that have to do with parental issues and yeah, love. Yeah, daddy issues. <laughs> yeah. And I noticed that as as they were starting to bring in the my dad, you know, 
our same father was the preacher and he had a secretary that he would have preferred but then you came along yeah. and he chose your mother over me <laughs> he didn't use my he used uh striker as the last name not uh uh lucas Lu- lucas yeah you know <laughs> Hadouken!